So I don't know about you guys, but I have been intimidated about using 360 cameras to film 360 content, mainly because I just I just don't know what to film with a 360 camera. Fortunately, Insta360 sent me their Insta360 One X, and I've been playing with it for a few months now, and I gotta say, I really, really like it. Now this video is not sponsored by Insta360. They just sent me this device to, to play with, so take it for what it is. But it took me a while to figure out how to use a 360 camera and integrate it into my videos. And I think I figured it out. Now, while you can do all the cool things that a 360 camera can do, like a, like a tour of a room or the tiny planet effect or even the bullet time effect, the one feature that I find the most useful when using a 360 camera is the ability to reframe your shot. The cool thing about this camera in particular is that it shoots well beyond 4K. This tiny beast shoots 5.7K at 30 frames a second. Okay, so what does that even mean? What does having a 5.7K 360 video actually mean. Filming 360 video at such a high resolution gives you the ability to choose whatever angle you want in that 360 environment and then turn it into a rectilinear format so that you can integrate it into your video. Basically, when you're filming with a 360 camera, in post, you can choose an angle that's facing forward, to the sides, behind you, on top. You're just given so much freedom to film whatever angle you want without having to set this camera at that specific angle. You can choose that later on in post. <sighs> You're probably thinking, wow, Sid, how in the world are you doing that? Oh, oh my gosh. Recently, I took my wife on a road trip and I was able to use the Insta360 One X in tight places, but because it has a, such a wide angle view and it has the 360 capabilities, I was able to film some pretty awesome immersive content. For example, I wanted to film a two shot of me and my wife driving in the car. So I attached the Insta360 One X to the rear view mirror and now I have my two shot of us driving in the car. Pretty cool, right? but that's not the best part. I also have the option to reframe my shot. So if I wanted the shot to focus on my wife, I would simply drag my mouse and move the camera angle that way. Or if I wanted a shot of myself, I would drag the mouse and reframe the angle to me. Or I can show you our perspective of the drive and flip the camera angle a complete 180 and show you the road that we drove on. Why are you so cool, huh? Why are you so cool? Okay, we friends. I did the same thing when I was riding on an electric scooter. Those things are so much fun. I simply attached the camera on top of the scooter and it was probably about maybe this far away from my body, probably about that same height. And then I just simply pressed record as I was riding through the city. And just like the scene of me and my wife in the car, I was able to capture an angle of myself, but also flip the camera angle a complete 180 and show my perspective as I was riding on the scooter. Now you might be thinking, why is that footage so smooth? I mean, shouldn't there be bumps when you're filming in a car or on an electric scooter? And yes, that's true in most cases, but there's a really cool piece of tech in this camera and it's called flow state stabilization. And it's it's pretty much it's pretty much magic, like like dark magic. Like real dark magic. I don't know exactly what it is, but essentially this has one of the best stabilizations of any camera that I've ever used. And so you don't have to worry about seeing those bumps when you're filming in a car or riding on a scooter or simply just walking around with this camera. So you can rest assured that whatever you film, it'll be stabilized like really well because of that dark magic. The Insta 360X is a pretty easy camera to operate. Here, let me show you. So there are two sides of the camera, one in the front and one in the back. And over here is your screen to see your options as well as two buttons to navigate through the menu. To turn it on, press the bottom button. A nice little blue light over there. If you push the bottom button, you can go through the different menu options, whether it's a camera for stills, the video camera to film, or even the settings itself. And if you scroll through the settings and say you wanna take a 360 photo, just go to the camera option and then press the top button. And now you've taken the 360 photo. If you want to do videos, go to the next menu, click that, and then go through your options. Here it says I'm filming in 5.7K, and so if I want to film in that resolution, I just click that, and now it's recording. Hit it again to stop recording. And then you can choose other options like film in 4K or film in HD at different frame rates. If you want to change the camera settings, all you have to do is go on the wheel option, click that, and just simply go through and make uh, whatever changes you want. 
and so on and so forth. So pretty easy to navigate through. You can pretty much do everything within the camera itself because of that screen. It's really helpful to navigate through. And so you can even do things like calibrate your gyroscope, which is a really important thing to do before you film. You can even shoot raw photos in here. You can shoot HDR video. I mentioned before you can film in 5.7K at 30 frames a second, but you can also film in 4K if you wanted to. You can film in 4K at 50 frames a second, 3K at 100 frames a second. You can film in log, which is really handy for color correction and color grading. It even has a feature called flicker fix, which solves a problem of different light frequencies in your video footage. I get to try that out, but at least that's a pretty cool option to have. You can also connect the camera to your phone. And so if you want to control the camera remotely, then you can use your phone and use the Insta360 app. They also give you cables to connect the Insta360 One X to your phone. And so you can control your camera that way, you even look at some of the footage you shot, if that's something you prefer. Insta360 also has an accessory out called the Drifter. And essentially it's a football that you can put your camera in and throw it. This is where changing your angles and posts takes it to a whole new level. Essentially, you just throw the drifter at an action moment. So if there's a basketball game, you throw the drifter as a person shoots or as the ball goes into the hoop. And in post, you can choose the angle to start on the players and then go to the ball as it goes into the hoop. Or if you're filming a skateboarder scene, you can throw the drifter as the skater jumps and then change your angle in post to create a really dynamic and immersive scene. Why you so cool, huh? Why you so cool? Okay, we friends. There are other accessories that Insta360 makes and you can definitely check it out on their site. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with this tiny little camera. I honestly didn't think I'd want to film with a 360 camera, but after playing with this guy for several months, I just leave this camera in my bag and take it wherever I go because well, it's, it's super tiny, why not? Now, of course you can create 360 content like the tiny planet effect or the bullet time effect, but choosing whatever angle you want in that 360 space just gives you so much creator freedom as a storyteller and paves the way for the future of story storytelling, whatever that may look like. So there you go, the Insta360 One X. I'm actually excited to see where a 360 camera is going. Again, I'm really interested in what immersive content looks like in the future. And so I'll definitely be experimenting with more uh, 360 content with this guy. All right, guys, that is it for me, but I'm gonna end this video by showing you more footage that I shot with the Insta360 One X. Bye.